a boy named JP dancing as he works his shift at a burger joint. He soon gets disturbed by a co-worker who begs him to help cover her shift at the drive-thru, since she has something important to attend to, even though he's reluctant to do it. The co-worker is quite convincing, and he agrees. When he gets to the duty post, he's also having fun while attending to the customers among them. Is Andrea a friend of JP's sister, Lily, who also happens to be inside the car? JP has a huge crush on Andrea, and he tries to score a few points but gets interrupted by Lily a few times. Andrea then announces that Lily has gained admission to study at Columbia. JP is surprised to hear this, and Lily confirms it, telling him to make sure he's around for the celebration at their house. When JP finishes his shift at the drive-thru, he calls his mom, Amelia, to complain about why he's just getting to know about Lily's good news. Amelia says, it's nothing serious and he should be happy for her and come home to celebrate. She also tells him that even though she'd be far away, Lily we would always be there for him much later. After hanging out with another co-worker, JP arrives at home. And it's not long after that Lily comes to see him in his room. At first they start making fun of each other, but a while later JP says he's proud of her. Lily tries to bring up a conversation about how JP can also go to college, but he says college is not for him, and he's only up for hustling. He even brags that he'd buy their mom a house before she graduates. Lily finds everything he says funny, and eventually she asks them to take a picture just as she takes the shot. JP notices that Lily has got a butterfly tattoo behind her ear. He looks very interested in it, but Lily tells him not to say a word about it to their mother. After that, they head out to the living room, where Lily's celebration party is going down. Everyone seems to be enjoying the party, with Lily playing with cootie catchers, and also sending one to JP as well. Shortly after Amelia gives a speech about how happy she is for Lily. After she's through Lily takes over and says, Emily doesn't have to worry much about her going far away. Especially because JP will be around just as she asks JP if he'll take care of things while she's away. A bright light shines through the house, and police officers enter to arrest everyone in there, including JP, Lily, and Amelia. As it turns out the state's governor, Harper Finn, has issued an executive order to arrest illegal immigrants and also their children as accomplices, for not reporting their parents. Several news stations continue to report the news, with political experts saying, Finn's move is to solidify his base before the election, especially since migrants in the state usually don't vote for a Republican. In his statement through the local news, Finn says there will be zero tolerance for illegal immigrants in the state. Things move quite quickly, and JP, who is locked in a separate place, sees Lily being taken away to a different location. Days later, an official from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security requests to see JP when he gets to her office. JP recognizes the lady as one of those who is trying to get the governor to overturn the executive order. She tells him her attempts have failed, and illegal immigrants will now be deported as soon as possible. JP is worried that this means his mother will leave, but the lady tells him that it's possible for her to stay, if a natural-born citizen of the U.S. can claim her JP offers to do it but he's told that since he's still detained, it's not possible. However, she tells him that there's another solution. She shows him a leaflet of a program called the Elderly American Tolerance and Understanding Project, telling him it's a community service program that can help set him free if he enrolls and completes the program, seeing as the only other option is to stand trial as an accomplice to an illegal immigrant, which he knows will not end. Well, he agrees to join the program. Not long after JP is interviewed by two officials who ask a few questions about him along with JP, other detainees, Camilla Big Mac, Chris and Micah are also interviewed before they are taken to a place called the Alcove, which is where they'll participate in the program. A security officer named Bruce gives all the volunteers certain instructions. He tells them they'll be unable to communicate with the outside world, and if they misbehave he'll bring them back to the detention center. The volunteers also get ankle monitors which Bruce says will help the program coordinators monitor their movements, especially during curfew at night. With this, the volunteers are taken to the alcove, where they meet the founder of the program. Eddie Eddie welcomes the volunteers and tells them that their job is to help take care of seniors and old people in the facility. He also tells them that if they stick with the program, they'll leave more mature and even find the experience rewarding. As he talks, none of the volunteers react to his speech, and he then introduces the operation officers, Cynthia and James, from there. The volunteers are shown to their rooms, after which they're taken around the alcove for a tour. During the tour, JP's attention catches a woman in a wheelchair named Greta, 
but he says nothing to her. JP quickly becomes friends with Big Mac, Kamala, and the rest. After they're through with the tour, they head out to have lunch together at the table. Big Mac complains about the kind of food they're getting and he mistakes Micah for a white girl telling her to help the mask for better meals. Micah clarifies it and says, she's Argentinian Chris, then starts talking about how he's terrified of touching the old people in the alcove. He also says he won't be eating or drinking anything from there because the only person he trusts not to poison him is his mom, and her food is all that he eats. While the others are also pitching in and asking Chris questions, Camila suddenly shouts at them as she's tired of hearing them talk about irrelevant things, saying they're not at summer camp. She gets up and leaves the table, and almost immediately James comes over and hands out their uniforms to them. The volunteers are asked to begin their assignments after they've gotten their uniforms, while Big Mac and Camilla go on to pick the senior. They'll be caring for JP is again drawn to Greta and he chooses to attend to her JP, introduces himself and starts talking to her, but he struggles to get a response from Greta. Seeing this Micah has to come back to help him out by giving him a book and asking him to read to her just as he starts reading. Micah leaves and suddenly Greta finally speaks. Saying you will die here, JP stops. Reading to understand what she's saying, but as Greta cries and tries to be louder, Cynthia injects her with something that gets her unconscious. While JP is processing what had just happened, James tells him to back off as Cynthia. Wheels. Greta away as JP wonders where they'll be taking her. Camila comes behind him and jokes about how he's too good with women. Later that day when they're in the dining room, the group of friends try to convince Chris to eat or drink something, because he has still refused to take anything. Aside from using his inhaler, Chris doesn't listen to them as he says he's not going to break. He then comes up with a theory saying the program organizers are watching them from behind a dark glass and that something fishy is going down at the facility. He also says he's not eating anything because he'll leave soon as this will mean escaping, which they've been warned about, Big Mac and JP. Tell Chris that will be a bad idea when Chris continues to talk about it Micah tells him to stop talking and try it shockingly. Chris stands up and tries to open a locked door to get out. This turns out to be a very bad idea as his efforts to escape trigger an alarm system that sees some of the security officers at the alcove bring a taser to shock him and then take him away. With the others doing nothing but watch that night during curfew, JP leaves his room to use the restroom but returns only to see an old lady who keeps saying, Virgil will set you free. JP doesn't understand what this means but the woman suddenly jumps on him before she can do anything. Cynthia is able to inject her to go unconscious, while James tells JP to return to his room. On the next day, Eddie takes the volunteers to a new ward to show them some of the seniors who had more serious conditions. He also apologizes to JP and explains that what happened to him last night was because someone left the door to that ward open and the old lady got out. JP asks if they can help the seniors in the ward too, and Eddie says James will show him what to do if he wants to help, while the others opt out. JP stays, but isn't too pleased when James calls him a name he doesn't like. Eddie soon ensures they don't come to blows, when he notices that JP is getting angry, following that James asks for JP's help, with putting one of the seniors on the bed, as JP helps another patient bites his hand, and as he tries to tell James to handle the man carefully, JP passes out 